Today we're going to be deep diving into everything related to the new bunker upgrade system. This means all the requirements for each upgrade and what all the upgrades actually do for you. Now in general, note that the bunker upgrade station is located in the back of the Tabor market at our good pal Merrick. This is what you'll use to complete all of the upgrades shown throughout this video. For most rooms there will be both a room level and a utility level. To put it simply for now, room level will upgrade the amount of equipment that you have in your room, and utility level will upgrade your quality or efficiency of the items in these rooms. For Intel, Garden, and Medical, you will need both Room Level 1 and Utility 1 for anything in these rooms to be functional. Now with that little bit of information out of the way, let's crack into this. If you own the Standard Edition of Tabor, you'll start out with Armory 1, Kitchen, Storage 1, the Trade Room, the Generator, and your Vault. Everything else will be locked unless you own any of the upgraded DLC. If you want access to the gun range, you will have to purchase that from Merrick. But let's go ahead and start with your Armory and how you upgrade it. To keep things organized, I'm going to show you what all three levels of the armory look like and what they hold. Then we'll go over the cost and requirements for each upgrade. I'll continue doing this same thing throughout all of the sections of this video. With Armory 1, this holds a small gun wall, two armor mannequins, some backpack hangers, and two small item shelves. With Armory 2, this allows you access to a bigger gun wall, some armor storage lockers that can hold three chest rigs and three helmets, backpack hangers that can hold a variety of backpacks, the beloved ammo crafter and loader, another mannequin, and other general storage. Armory 3 unlocks even more gun walls, armor mannequins, armor lockers, and backpack hangers. The upgrade requirements for each of these levels are as follows. Armory Room Level 1 is free and is unlocked from the start. Armory Room Level 2 will require Character Level 5 and 15,000 Karunas. And lastly, Armory Room Level 3 will require you to be Character Level 32 and 75,000 Karunas. Having a bigger armory means having more kits ready to go and less time in between raids trying to sell and move items around. Now if this isn't enough room for you, then let's discuss your next option. The Storage Rooms. At some point your bunker may feel a little crowded, and that's where the storage rooms come into play. Starting out, you will have storage room 1, which is unlocked for free. It's a little on the smaller side, but hey, it is indeed free. It contains a triple stacked shelving unit and one single wall shelf, a good place to store extra nerds and bunker resources. Storage room 2 it has a total of three wall shelves and three triple stacked shelves, all waiting for you to load them up with your precious loot. Storage room 3 reveals another five triple stacked shelving units with one wall shelf in the corner. The cost of each of these upgrades are as follows. Storage room level 2 requires character level 8 and 25,000 Kuruna. Storage room level 3 requires character level 25 and 50,000 Kuruna. If this isn't enough storage for you, then my friend, you have a hoarding problem. But let's move on to the more pressing issue, being able to see inside your bunker. If your bunker seems a little dark, this is because you have to turn on your generator. It takes fuel that can be purchased from the market or found in a raid. It burns fuel non-stop while it is running and is required to run the machines in Intel and Medical, so make sure you turn it on and off accordingly. The generator only has a utility level currently, with each level increasing the efficiency and allowing the gas to burn for longer. Its higher levels are also a requirement for some of the room upgrades. Generator utility level 2 will require you to be character level 14 and have 15,000 Karunas. And level 3 will require you to be character level 23 and have 30,000 Karunas. If you play your cards right and get 4 GPUs running in Intel, that room can earn you enough per hour to pay for all the fuel you need to run your bunker. Speaking of Intel, let's slide into that information now. One thing you've all been waiting for is the chance to mine some crypto with all those GPUs you've been finding in Raid. Now purchasing Intel Room Level 1 from Merrick will just unlock the door but not unlock any mining rigs. You will have to actually make sure that your utility level is at least level 1 as well to have your first rig. Now after these requirements are met, when you upgrade your Intel Room, every level will add one more GPU mining rack for a max total of 4 racks. Every Intel utility level will increase the multiplier of Kudunas produced per minute. With one GPU in the rack and level 1 utility, you will have 1.5 Kuruna per minute with each additional one adding another 1.5. If you manage to max out the racks with 48 GPUs on level 1 utility, you will make 72 Kuruna per minute. Upgrading to level 2 utility, you will make 96 Kuruna per minute. And lastly, level 3 utility, you will make a whopping 120 Kuruna per minute. That is 7,200 Kuruna per hour or 172,800 Kuruna per day. 
Intel Room Level 1 upgrade is going to require character level 7 and 15,000 Kuruna. Level 2 will require character level 16, generator station level 2, and 30,000 Kuruna. Level 3 will require character level 26, generator station level 2, and 60,000 Kuruna. And Room Level 4 will require character level 38, generator level 3, and 100,000 Kuruna. For Utility Level 1, you need character level 7 and 10,000 Kuruna. Utility Level 2 needs character level 22 and 30,000 Kuruna. And lastly, Utility Level 3 requires character level 34 and 50,000 Kuruna. All this money making is awesome provided that you keep your generator filled up and running, not to mention getting all of those GPUs. It's going to require a lot of time spent running raids and most likely you need to heal yourself up in those raids, because in case you haven't noticed, it's kind of hard to get those nerds now. But now you can make them yourself by spending time growing in the Takistan Sun Seeds in the new Garden Room. This right here is another room you've been waiting for. You're now able to grow plants here with the Takistan Sun Seeds found from Yuri or Hana. This is another one of those rooms as stated before that you'll need to have room level 1 and utility level 1 for anything to show up. The basic operation of this room is you put water in the water tank and place one of the Takistan Sun Seeds into the dirt indent of the planters. There are three stages of growth for each plant with a plant being complete and harvestable after 72 hours. Do note for this room that every room level upgrade will give you another planter for a max of three large planters, and upgrading the utility level will increase the duration that your water reserve lasts. Room level 1 requires you to have character level 10 and 10,000 Karunas. Room level 2 is character level 18, generator utility 2, and 30,000 Karunas. And room level 3 is character level 28, generator utility 3, and 50,000 Karunas. Now, Garden Utility Level 1 will require Character Level 10 and just 10,000 Karunas. Utility Level 2 will be Character Level 19 and 30,000 Karunas. And lastly, Utility Level 3 will be Character Level 29 and 50,000 Karunas. After 72 hours of these plants growing, we can then harvest them and receive our Medicinal Takistan Sun product. And after learning a little bit about the Medical Room, we'll be able to use these to craft some nerds. So let's go do that. Now the Takistan Sun product from the previous section is now required to take advantage of the medical room, as you have a couple of choices. Unlocking the first medical room level and first medical utility level will grant you access into the room, and use of the first machine to our right. This here is the Advantage Bandage Crafter. It actually takes the toilet paper that you find in raids, giving some new purpose to items that cannot be purchased. To use it, all you need to do is open the bottom tray, insert the toilet paper, and close the tray. The machine will then read ready, and you can hit the button next to it. Once you hear the machine stop, you can open the top tray to reveal a fresh new bandage inside. Upgrading each utility level will allow you to craft more bandages from a single roll of toilet paper. Now this machine on our left here is the Advantage Nerds Crafter. It takes a Takistan Sun product we got earlier from the harvested plants. This can be unlocked at medical room level 2. To use it all you need to do is insert the Takistan Sun product into the bottom tray of the machine, close it, make sure the light is green and says ready, and then hit the button next to it. Once again when the machine stops you can open the top tray revealing two fresh new nerds. Each utility level upgrade will allow you to craft two more at a time for a total of six nerds per harvested plant. The cost for these are as follows. Room level 1 requires character level 12 and 10,000 Kuruna. Room level 2 requires character level 20, generator level 2, and 30,000 Kuruna. With the utility levels, it's going to need character level 12 and 10,000 Kuruna. Utility level 2 is character level 21, garden room and utility level 1, and 30,000 Kuruna. And last but not least, utility level 3 will be with character level 33, garden room and utility level 1, and 50,000 Kuruna. This medical room is going to be essential to your survival in Tabor, so we hope to see you grinding towards it and making the most out of your bunker. But with all of these extra medical supplies, you may need one last place to store them all. While the main purpose for maintenance in the future will not be just for storing goods, but crafting makeshift weapons and items, it currently acts as a good spot to store your collections. Though you're probably going to have to wait as it requires character level 36 to purchase and 50,000 Karunas. This is currently all the information we have regarding the bunker upgrade system, and do note that all the information in this video is subject to change and most likely will change over time. Just think of this video as a guideline for what you can and should upgrade within your bunker. Thanks again to Warites for your amazing support, enjoy the fresh wipe, and as always, remember to trust nobody.